Welcome back, Clarity Coders. Today we got a fun one. I'm gonna show you how to create an automated Google Drive backup. With your Google account, you get so much free space. And although I love GitHub and Git for backing up code, sometimes you wanna back up your files or whatever else you have. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Thank you for everyone who has in these past couple of weeks. I really appreciate it. Let's jump right in. So what I've done here is I've set up a brand new Google account and I'm gonna show you how to create everything from scratch in this video. So the first thing I'm gonna do after you have your Google account, so you're gonna be logged into whatever Google account you want to use, I'm gonna navigate to this URL, which is just the quick start guide for Google Drive with Python. It gives you a couple prerequisites, which you should already have. If you don't have Python or Anaconda installed, you can go ahead and follow one of my videos to check out how to get that installed. And you also have to have PIT, PIP in order to install the library. So again, there's some videos that I have out there that you can watch if you'd like to see how to do all those. And then your first step is to turn on the Drive API. So we're just gonna click this blue Enable Drive API button. So you gotta give the project a name. I'm gonna say Backup tutorial i'll say yes next we're just going to create a desktop app so we can leave that go ahead and push create now here it gives you some information and you can also just download your client configuration that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to go ahead and click download and let that download so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a project folder for this project i'm just going to create it on my desktop so i'm going to say new folder i'm going to call this folder backup tutorial and then I can put all my project files in here, including that file we just downloaded. So what you wanna do is navigate to wherever that was downloaded. I'm just gonna go show in folder. You can see here I have this credentials file. So I'm gonna, very advanced here, drag and drop that into my backup script here. So now we got our folder with our credentials inside of it. Now we can go ahead and start writing some code. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use Visual Studio. You can use whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Visual Studio. I'm gonna open my folder, select that folder. The only thing you wanna make sure here is that you still have this credentials in whatever folder you're working with or you're gonna to have to navigate to it. So I'm gonna have it in the same folder. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm just gonna call this, I'm gonna save it and call it setup.py. And now we can start playing around with this a little bit. So we'll go back to this page here. You can see we got the API turned on. Now we need to install some libraries that Google is going to use, or that we're going to use with Python to connect to our Google Drive. So I'm just gonna copy this pip command. Again, if you don't have Python on the path, you're gonna have to have that already. If you do, and you do have pip on the path as well, you can install this however you would normally install your pip packages i'm going to do it inside of visual studio here so i'm going to do pip actually i copied it i'll just paste it in here and you can see i'm just doing the the pip install of these libraries go ahead and hit enter this will take some time i've obviously already installed this on my system that's why you're getting a little different messages once you've installed you should be ready to move ahead with me and then we're going to take a look at this quickstart.py I'm not gonna do this first line. I think that's just a fix Python 2 um, print syntax here. I don't know if they use it in here, but we'll just import starting after that line. And we'll save this file. So what this is doing here, it's just getting us set up in our main program. We're not gonna keep much from this program at all. We're just gonna make sure we get this working. If you can't get this to work, you know you have something wrong with your credentials or something like that. So we're gonna move on from this quickly. But we're gonna try and get this running real quick just to make sure we're working. So you can see here that it's setting up a scope. It's a read-only scope, which we're gonna change later. It's creating a token.pickle file. That's just where it's gonna save the credentials if you've already validated it. It's gonna look for credentials, the credentials file, which we do have in our directory, so we should be all good there. And that's pretty much it. Now, I did say that this is a brand new Google account. I'll go to drive.google.com. You can see I literally have nothing in here right now. I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file just so we can see a file in here. I'll upload my thumbnail from my last video, iTorch series, if you haven't checked it out, check that out. Shameless plugs all the way. 
Okay, so now we do have a file in here, so we're gonna see if we can read that. So let's go ahead and just try and run this program. Now your first time, it's gonna ask you to validate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my brand new account here, which was drive.backup.clarity.gmail.com. See if I can remember what I used for a password. It's gonna give you some warnings. You can go ahead and accept these. Mine, I had to hit advanced. Go to quick start and now I'm allowing permissions here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit allow and allow again here. And now the authentication flow has completed. You may close this window. I'm going to go ahead and close it out. And you can see that it did connect. It has one thumbnail image that showed up, which seems to be correct. I only have one file in there. So this is perfect. This seems to be working okay. We can go ahead and move on from it. This is going to be our basic setup. Now how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to do it with classes. So if you're not familiar with classes, check out this video, shameless plug. And you can get a little more familiar with that. You don't have to ha have a whole lot of knowledge of classes. I'm gonna kind of break it down. The reason I'm doing a class is just so we can handle the login and the authentication kind of separate. So let's go ahead and create a class here. So I'm just gonna add some space up here. I'm gonna create a new class called my drive. You could call it anything you wanted to. And I'm going to create the special init function. Remember, these are just like a constructor and other languages. We're just telling Python how we want to initialize our new class. So I'm going to pass in self. This is so it knows about its own object values. And I'm going to say that's all you really need to create a my drive class. Now, the first thing I want to put in here is my scopes. I'm going to go ahead and pass this inside. And then I can delete this out. And you can see here it says, if you're modifying the scope, you need to delete the file token.pickle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because the next time we're gonna run this, we're gonna run it with different permissions. I'm just gonna move that to the recycling bin. So make sure you delete out that token file. And I'm gonna delete all this here that says read only. So this is just gonna give me full access to my drive, read and write permission. Now again, this is gonna ask me to authenticate and accept some things when I, uh, the next time I run this program, you won't have to do that every time. This is just because we're changing the permissions again. And now I'm gonna paste, paste in the rest of this first time authentication type of options here. So I'm gonna grab all of these and paste that into my initialization as well. So what I'm doing here is I am setting it up so every time I'm tabbing so these are all lined up again. So I'm setting this up so every time I initialize a new my drive, it's gonna go ahead and authenticate for me and log in essentially. Now the only thing I wanna reuse is this service. So once it grabs the service, I want that to be saved so I can do whatever I want later. I can update files, I can list files, whatever I want. So I'm gonna add self dot and I'm gonna change this into an attribute of my my drive object. So I'll kind of show you how that works in just a second. So we got our initialization done. Now this stuff here, I would say doesn't really go inside of initialization. Every time I initialize a my drive, I don't want it to necessarily print out all my files. That's kind of weird. So I'm gonna create a new method. So what this is doing, it's listing out the top 10 or the 10 files in my pay or on my drive rather. So I'm just gonna create a new function for that inside of the class. So you can see I'm still tabbed inside of this class. I'm gonna create a new function called list files maybe, and I'm gonna set self here. I'm gonna pass in self so it knows about its own objects. And now I'm also going to add a page size. And I'm gonna default that to 10, which is the value they gave us in the setup script. So you don't have to pass in page size. If you don't, it'll just give you 10 results. And then I'm going to tab this over so it's lined up, cool. And you can see here that my page size is still equal to 10. We want it to be equal to whatever we pass in, although the default is 10. So this should work exactly the same. You can see it's fitting now because I'm not doing any, anything inside of my main me method. And if I just do pass here and run this, we're not gonna get anything, right? Because we're not actually running anything in our class. Remember, to run a class, we actually have to initialize it. So I'm gonna create a my drive variable here. You could call this anything. This is just a variable. You could call it taco salad. And I'm going to say my drive and call that. 
Now, what do we need to pass into here? We created the class and we said you don't have to pass anything into the drive, so that's perfect. And then after that, we should have a drive. Now, nothing's gonna print out if I ran this again because we're not listing the files, we're not doing anything with my drive. So let's do my drive dot list files. We know I don't have anything on this, so you can see here that it'll default to 10. That's fine because I only have one file in there anyways. And if I run this, remember we changed our permission, so it's gonna ask us to authenticate one more time. You can see it wants us to authenticate. I'm going to use my burner account here. Because it's not verified, advanced, quick start. We're gonna allow, so now you can see our permissions are a little different. We can edit, create, and delete from our Google Drive files. Go ahead and push allow and allow. And you can see our authentication has completed, perfect. Now you can see here, service is not defined. So we got through all that and then it didn't work. And you'll notice here to grab our files out, we're using that service variable, but it's in a different function now. So how can we use this? Well, we were thinking ahead a little bit and we added self, which means it belongs to this object, this instance object of the class. So you'll notice here, we also passed in self to our new function. So all we have to do to get back to that service variable is do self dot. Now, if we run this again, you'll see we don't get that error. And we're back to kind of where we started. So, so again, it seems like a little wasted time with the setup, but you can see our program's much cleaner now. The only thing happening in our main method is just the stuff pertaining to our particular program. All the class stuff is handled above. We could even push that to a separate file if we wanted to really get it out of the way. So now, what we came here to do, we have our project folder here that I called Backup Tutorials, but what I wanted to show you guys today is how you could have an automated backup folder on your desktop or something like that, or multiple folders, whatever you want really, that you don't have to worry about backing up, it just backs up on a scheduled task or something like that. So I'm gonna call this folder just Backup. And you'll see, I actually already created one on my other screen, I got too many screens going on. So I have another folder that's just on my desktop that's called Backup, and this is going to be what we're gonna grab files from and push it to Google Drive. So now in my program, I need to be able to see what's inside that folder, which is nothing right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and import OS as well. I'm gonna import OS. And then down here in my main method, I don't really wanna list out the files anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out for right now. And what I'm gonna do is add a path that I wanna back up. So this is gonna be dependent on your system and where your files are that you're wanting to back up. So you can't necessarily copy mine. You're going to need to create your own path wherever that may be. Here is the path to my backup folder. So if you're on Windows, you can just double click on that folder, click here, and it'll give you this full path to that, that folder. You can see it has nothing in it right now. Let's go ahead and create some junk files. I'm gonna call this test.text. We will stay conventional here and do a little hello world. And we'll also just do a blank Excel worksheet. So now that I have my path here, and again, you're gonna have to use your own value here, I'm gonna navigate and grab every file out of that path and loop through it. And each time we're gonna reach to our class and we're gonna update and we're gonna push it to Google Drive. So I'm gonna say my files equal os.listdir, and then I'm gonna push my path there that we set up above. So this should grab all my files that are inside of this path. Now I can iterate over that. So I'm gonna say, I'll say for item in files, print out item. Now if I run this, remember it's gonna do nothing with our drive, it's gonna initialize it, but it's not actually gonna list our files out. And you can see here that it prints out the file name of everything inside of that backup directory, which is what I quote unquote want to back up. So the next site I want you to take a look at is this site right here, which talks about uploading file data to Google Drive. And you can see here that it's showing, it's in Java now, you can see here that it's, if you flip to Python, that it's showing you how you can upload a file to Google Drive. So we're going to kind of use this template here to upload our files. But I have a couple things, a couple catch-alls that are gonna get you if you're doing it this way. The first thing is if you upload files and it 
has, it already exists. So say I upload this set of files, um, test.txt, and then later I change that to be, instead of hello world, to say goodbye. Well, it's actually gonna create two copies of the same exact file when that's not really what I want, right? I want it to update the one that's on there as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do a couple things different here other than this example, but this is where I derived my ideas from. So you can see we got our list files function. We also want another function on here, and this is going to be our update function. So we're gonna create another function here called upload file. I needed to know about its own attributes, so I'm still gonna use self. I also probably want the file name that I'm gonna pass in. And I also want the path of how to find that file. So I'm gonna pass in the path as well. And then down here, instead of printing out the item each time, I'm actually gonna call that function. So to call that function, remember it's on my drive class. So I'm gonna use my variable I created, which was my drive dot upload file. And then we created it, so we know we need to pass in the file name which was stored in item as we iterate over this. So it's gonna change each time, right? The first time it's gonna be new Microsoft Excel worksheet.xlsx. The next time it's gonna be test.txt, so on and so forth. And then I also wanna pass in the path, how I can get to that file. So I'm gonna pass in this variable as well. Each time I iterate over this, I don't wanna just throw it in Google Drive, you might but I want to create some type of folder that symbolizes that this is my backup data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call my new folder backup, pretty creative. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder and you can see I have a folder ID up here. I'm gonna grab that folder ID. So this is where I want all my backup files to be from my desktop. I want them to be backed up onto a folder called backup on my Google Drive. So I'm gonna grab that ID hop back, into Visual hop back into Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna say my folder ID equals, and then I'll paste in that ID. That's where I'm gonna throw everything. Now on the website that was talking about how to upload files, they mentioned that we need to do one more import here, this media file upload. So I'm gonna import this into my project as well. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my new media file. So now, if we ran this backup before, this might be me updating the file. If we haven't ran this backup before, it's me creating a brand new file, but we don't care. We're just creating it at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the path to that file and the file name itself, and then we're gonna create that and save it in the variable called media. If you run this and you get any type of error like file not found or something like that, you know your path is off, your spelling, maybe you're using the wrong slashes, something along those lines. So now once we have our media, the only thing we need to really figure out is, are we updating a file on the backup server or are we creating a new file? If we're updating the file, it's a little different than creating a new one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically query my drive to see if that file exists on it already. So I'm gonna create a variable called response, and I'm gonna use my service object again, which was on self.service. Then I'm gonna do dot .files, dot .list. Now again, I grabbed this from the documentation, straight from the documentation, which, I, which I'll link to in the description below. And that's how I came up with this query that I'm gonna do. So inside of list, here's the query that I have set up. So the first attribute I'm gonna pass in is going to be Q which is my query itself. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for any name of a file that matches our file name. And I need the parent of that file to be in our folder. Because if we have a test.txt somewhere else in our Google Drive, I don't wanna update that, right? That might be for a different project or something totally unique. So I just wanna update the one in our backup folder. So. I have to have it match both of these objects. So I'm doing name and parents. And that's pretty much all I'm doing here. The rest I'm just basically copying uh, from the documentation. Now, one other thing, I want to execute this. If I could spell execute correctly. So I'm gonna add that to the end. So this response will come back with 
some type of value for me. So let's take a quick peek at what that looks like. So after I do this, I just wanna print out that response. Plus we've done a lot here, so I wanna see if this all works. Oops, you can see, we don't wanna use file name here. I wanna use file name, file name, and our folder ID. Those are just some different, I must use a different variable name when I was playing around with this earlier. Awesome. So we should be calling this function every time we loop over the item. So we should call it once for our Excel worksheet and once for our test.txt. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And you can see each time this hints, this hits this print function, it's printing out a dictionary with files as the key and then a list of the files that I'm assuming match this query. And you can see this list is blank which makes a lot of sense, right? Because there is nothing inside of there. So when it's looking for that test.txt in the Excel document, it's not finding anything, which is perfect. So we can use that to kind of uh, decide how we're gonna execute this. So if we're gonna create a new file or if we're going to update an existing file. So I'm gonna say if the length of response, and it's a dictionary, so the key I wanna grab out is files, and I'm getting that just from down here, so it's gonna return this blank list in this example. So if that length is greater than, well, let's say if that length is equal to zero, then we know we wanna create a new file, right? It doesn't exist yet. So the first thing we wanna do is create our file metadata, and we're just gonna set that equal to a dictionary with key value pairs. Now this was provided to me by the documentation again. So the first thing I have to tell Google Drive is what I wanna name this file I'm uploading. So I'm gonna set my name in this key value pairs equal to whatever I want. I could put anything here, but it makes sense to use the same file name as what was on our computer. So we're gonna use that variable file name. And then to make sure it goes in the correct drive, I have to fill out the parent. So the parent is this folder ID. That's where I want this file to live. So I'm gonna pass in the folder ID as well. Now I'm gonna copy a line that I grabbed from the documentation and I'll walk you through this line. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new variable that I've just called file. I'm using our self.service again, files.create to create a brand new file. Now, the body we're gonna set with our file metadata. Now you can add a lot more inside of this. You can play around and look at what that entails. But the only thing we're telling Google Drive is, hey, this is what we want you to name our file and this is where we want it to live. So we're passing that in here. Next, we have to actually pass in our files data. So we did that way up here when we set this variable and we navigated to the path on our file on our local system. And that's what we're gonna pass in there. We wanna grab an ID back just for our own reference. And then we're gonna execute that query. Then I'll just print out a little documentation note here. So I'm going to say a new file was created and I'll print out file.get ID, perfect. So now we should actually create our new files on the server, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and run this. You can see a new file was created, a new file was created. Run this. And you can see we've definitely improved, right? We definitely created our new files, but they're not in our backup folder. So we must have messed up somewhere there. Ooh, we actually need to pass this in as a list. Let's wrap that in square brackets. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these files just so they don't mess us up. I just cleared everything out to clean this up. We fixed our code here. Let's go ahead and run this again. You can see it created two new files. And if we double click on our backup, you can see they're correctly in our backup folder now. So now you can see that we have our new files in our backup folder. This is working as we expected. Now, as you can imagine from how I set this up, there is an issue if we run this again. It's not gonna recreate our files because we set this equal to zero. So the next time we do this, if we run this again, you'll see it does nothing, right? It doesn't create any new files, which is good because we don't want duplicates. But what if we change our file, right? So I changed my file and I still want this to update and keep track of my revisions here. So I've updated this, but it's never gonna actually update that because it's gonna find the file 
and then see that it already exists and not create a new file. So we need to add an else here to handle our update scenario. So I'm gonna say else, and I'm gonna run this little chunk of code I did to update file. So what I did here is I said for file in response dot get files. So this is just to handle if there's two files in there with the same name or something like that, we're gonna update that file instead. So once we go through this for loop, it's gonna break down into our update file, and then we're gonna update the file. So I created a variable called update file, and I set it equal to, I use our self.service again, dot files, dot update. You'll notice this is really the only difference. Instead of dot create, I did dot update. Now, from this response, I'm gonna use that file's ID number. And that's what I'm gonna to use to actually update our file. And now the only difference, the metadata is the same, right? I still want it to stay in that parent's location. I still want it to have that file name. The only thing I wanna change is the media body. So I'm gonna update it to whatever our new media body is. I'm gonna execute that. I'm gonna print out our update file. I just did that to take a quick peek at it. We don't have to do that anymore. I'm just gonna print out a line that says updated file. So now if I run this again, you'll see this time they both said updated. And if we open up our test.txt, you can see that our test, our text inside of that test file has changed to clarity coders with an exclamation point. So now we're updating and creating new files anytime we store something in this folder. I'll do one more here just to show you that it is working correctly. We'll add a PowerPoint one, open our code back up, run it again. You can see two of the files updated and one was newly created. So this should be a good jumping off point for anything you wanna improve with this. Of course, you can see here that one issue we're having is I didn't really update anything with those two new files and we still pushed it to Google Drive. So that's a little wasted bandwidth there pushing out those files that hadn't been changed yet. You might be able to use like the modified date or something like that to change the script a little bit, but I'll let you guys play with that. So what I wanna set up really quick is I want this to run on an automated schedule. So if my computer's on at a certain time, I want it to automatically back up this file every day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a scheduled task for this. So this is if you're in Windows, you could do a cron job or something else if you're on a different operating system. But what I've done here is I went to task scheduler. I just searched that in Windows 10 and you can create a task here on this menu. Now I already created one. I called it Python backup and I'll show you exactly how I did that. So what I did here is I created a trigger the trigger is I want it to run every day at a certain time. You want this to be a time when your computer is at least powered on. And you can also make this so you don't have to be logged in as well. So I went ahead and did a daily at 910. Under my actions, this is where I start my program. Now this is a little different. So how I did this, if I double click on here, I actually run my python.exe. So this is wherever you have Python installed. And then I started this script inside of that backup script folder that's on my desktop. So not the backup folder, but my project folder here that has our setup.py in it. That's what I'm trying to run. So you can see here that the program slash script is our actual Python exe file. Our argument is our program, whatever you happen to name it. In my case, setup.py. And we have to start in wherever that setup.py file is. So all that looks good, push okay here, okay. And then if you just run, you can force run this. So if you right click, you can just hit run. You can see that it does, it just went through it really quickly there, but it updated all of our files just like it did before and then closed out of everything. And then it will be automatically updated on Google Drive. If you have any questions with this tutorial, we do free help on the Discord with any part of this that you got stuck. So feel free to join us. We chat about programming, life, whatever you want on the Discord. And we're always happy to help any newcomers. So if you haven't joined, go ahead and join today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep coding.